What's up everybody, JJ here, and today I'm gonna to be taking you through all the steps of taking your printer from a fun toy into a useful tool. We're gonna to be creating your first functional prints. I know when I first got my 3D printer, I just kept creating things that other people designed. The internet is full of great designs out there for a lot of specific use cases. Or for example, if you have a pegboard like this one and you need pegboard mounts, Type in pegboard mount 3D print model and you'll find so many amazing prints made from amazing designers. But there's a certain point when you wanna go beyond what other people have created and make something special and unique for you. And today I'm gonna to be taking you through all the steps from deciding what you wanna build, designing it, sketching it out, 3D modeling it, then printing it, and probably revising it a couple times. We'll see how many times it takes, but don't be discouraged if your first print isn't perfect. We're gonna start with something simple and I'm still gonna revise it several times along the way. So let's get right into it. There's two simple designs we're gonna create today. The first one, this is for the air vents that are on the floor of our house. They were here when we got the house and I don't know the exact model, I can't look up things for it, but our recent puppy named Ada, she has some great Pyrenees in her and loves to lay on these air vents when they're blowing cold air. But one issue is it's really easy for her to bump this switch and then it closes it and no air comes out. So I wanna create a simple clip that will clip on here and hold this switch over, keep the air open, keep it blowing on her. The other design is also dog related. Our dishwasher, we can't leave the door open there to keep the steam and all that moist hot air out of there because she likes to step on the door and I think as she's growing, she could break the door with her weight. So I wanted to create a simple clip on the top that will hold the door slightly open to let some of that moist air out. So both of these are fairly simple designs and makes them perfect examples for functional prints. So for tools, you are going to need some sort of measuring device. A ruler will work. It's really nice to have a ruler with millimeters on here. Millimeters are gonna be a bit more accurate for small pieces like this or a digital caliper. These can be purchased pretty cheap online. It's not an amazing precision one, but it's fine enough for my work. The next thing I would recommend is something to sketch on. I use a notebook and a pen, super simple to draw it out. You could use a post-it note, the back of a piece of paper. This is gonna be a fairly simple sketch. So looking at the kind of shape I want, I'm gonna create a two-dimensional slice of what I want. So let me just give it a rough sketch. And you don't need to be a great artist to do this. We're going really rough here. I'm thinking two millimeters thick on all the walls. And then you pull out your calipers and you can measure how long you want it. And some of your distances, I can't get this down in there to measure it exactly. So I can kind of guess what I want and then dial it in here, hold them up next to each other and thinking, will this size work there? And draw out the rest of your dimensions. Some of these dimensions, I really don't know. Some of these, the hook, on here that will latch onto the piece of metal, I'm not sure exactly what will work. I'm gonna start with one millimeter. If you need to up it in the future, it's really easy to print another one. This piece is gonna be so small, I bet it'll take 10 minutes per print. That's super easy to revise. I'm not gonna beat myself up over these tiny numbers. Here's our example sketch of some of our dimensions. That's just to show you that it really doesn't matter how accurate it is or how good it looks, just so you can look at it and know exactly what you want to model later and where these dimensions line up, then that's exactly what you need. I might use a ruler and some graph paper for that, but for this, I think a rough sketch on notebook paper should be fine. And now it's time to take this two-dimensional sketch and 3D model it on a computer. As we head to the computer, I'm gonna get the measurements for the dishwasher hook, and that's the same method here, but on a different device, so we don't need to see that. So we're gonna be doing the modeling in Fusion 360. There's several other softwares you can use, but I think for simple functional prints, Fusion 360 is great, especially for this one we're doing right now. And since Fusion 360 has a free version, we're gonna be using it today. So as soon as you open it up, it should look like this. You can change the color down here under environment settings. I leave it on gray room, because I like it a little bit darker, but not too dark. I think dark sky, a little too dark. So we'll leave it on gray room. So now that we have these sketches ready, these are gonna be so important. We just need to get these into the computer. So you'll start off by creating a sketch up in the top left corner. Create the, select the plane you want it to build it on. So we're gonna build it on the XY flat plane. Open it up here. We're gonna do line to start drawing out what we want. For something like this, let's just start at the origin. So start and kind of just start drawing out the rough shape and the size really doesn't matter. The angles can help if you start doing it in right angles right now, but you can easily, you can go through and define things 
as the next step. So now that we have the rough shape drawn out, let's go through and start defining things. Use this sketch dimensions to start uh, constraining sizes of things. Between here and here, this will be three millimeters. I haven't defined this. Let's make it one. I want the size of all these walls to be two millimeters. So define that here, this one, and this point. Let's try two. Or you can kind of change it around to see what looks good. This dimension doesn't change the functionality of it. It's more what size looks decent. From here to here, we want this thickness to be two. From here to here, we also want as two. And then from here to here, we want that to be 10. Now, whenever you're done sketching out your dimensions, go ahead and hit finish. And now we can go and extrude this. Uh, the middle mouse button is how you kind of track, move around, and shift middle mouse button lets you track ball, kind of three-dimensional move. And so you can either drag it up or type in how far you want. Let's try 10 millimeters enter then go through and put a fillet on everything as I'm looking at this it's way too long that's a dimension I forgot to put in and if you forget to put a dimension in you can easily go back down here at the bottom is your history go back down to that first sketch you made double click on it it thinks we're still working on a fillet so cancel your current operation double click on the sketch this re-enters your sketch mode so now we can add it define this to here here. Yeah, that was way too big. It was a dimension I just forgot to put in. Hit 12, and that takes it to where you want. Then hit finish sketch, and it carries it forward. It carries those changes you made forward into future changes. So, for example, this extrude now works with those new numbers to extrude a new shape, which this is a really powerful part of Fusion 360. If you're 15, 20 steps down the line, and you go back and change a dimension, it carries through all those operations. So for big projects, that can be really useful. Now, a big part of making this look really nice is adding a fillet or chamfer. Fillet is kind of a rounded edge, chamfer is a sharp edge. But for something this small, I think a fillet will work good. So go through and select the angles you want this fillet to be applied to. There, we'll do here, here, and the last angle. Uh, this is a small print, so let's try half. That looks pretty good. So now let's fill up the entire top and bottom angles. That edge, the entire bottom edge. Let's try if we can do one. No, see we got an error. That one would mess with some of these angles up here. Let's do a half. That also had some errors. 0.3 maybe? There we go. So that's a good looking first shape. Now we can take this to 3D print. Go up to the file and 3D print. It opens this window to select your parameters. You have to select the body you want to 3D print. You can select 3MF or an STL file. I'll do 3MF, keep it on millimeters. For refinement, I just keep high and click OK. And you can name it down here. This is our air vent clip. We'll name this V1. Just expect you're gonna revision it a couple times, especially with something as small as this. I'm just gonna try it out. I don't perfectly know if this will work, but it'll take 10 minutes and barely any filament to print. So we'll try it out, see if it works, and come back. Now you can open your slicing software. I use Cura, open that file. Let's move it to the middle of the plate. Slice it up, it'll be ready in five minutes. Now let's go see that print. So now I'm back with the first print done, and it works decently well. But there's definitely some things I'd like to change for a version two. So I didn't notice until I put this on here that the tab sticks out a little higher than the base plate here. So when I clip this on, it rocks back and forth because it's not on a flat surface. So I think I can build up one of those surfaces to make everything lay flat. The other difficulty here is that it slides up and down. So I think if I made it as long as this track here, it wouldn't wiggle in that direction. I also think increasing the edge of this little hook on the tip. So we're gonna do all three of those things with our version two. So let's go back into Fusion 360 and I want to edit this first sketch. So I need to go through and delete some of these parameters. You can right click, click delete to delete those. Delete, delete. So we really want this whole side to be 10 millimeters. This size, I'm gonna bump up to two millimeters. These two, let's make so three. 
but I want to add a section. So let's go back to the line tool, somewhere in the middle here. Go down to three millimeters over here. But here we've got too many lines here. So you can hit this trim tool to trim out that section of that line and that section of that line. It removed some of the constraints, but we can work with this. Sketch dimensions, uh, this to this, we want three millimeters like that. This to this, we want that to be five. And when we hit finish sketch, carry forward, we see these new angles weren't added to the fillet like before. So we can go back and edit this one, this one, this one, and this one. All to have that same 0.5. That's another good looking part. Oh, also I wanted to up this extrusion. It's always nice, I like to keep my calipers here at the desk where I'm working. We're gonna extrude it up to 59 millimeters. And there, that's a good looking part. We do the same thing as before, file, 3D print. Select your body, hit OK, export it as V2. Now let's get that one printed off and ready to work with. And here we are with our version two here. That's look, look, working really well. It clips on, holds it pretty well. It doesn't slide up and down, doesn't slide forward to back. It's still removable, but still lays fairly flush. I think that's a good working part. It's nice with a functional print. If you wanted to go on to improve it, you could, but I think this works for now, so I'm gonna try it out and use it. And if in a couple of months I find I wanna change or improve something on it, I can easily go back here and make those changes because I'll keep these files here on the computer. Now on to design number two. So to open a new design, simply go up to the top file, new design, and you're given a brand new blank slate to work from. We'll start with another 2D sketch this time, also on the XY plane, and you're really just transferring your paper sketches onto a computer. Draw out that rough design again. Go through and start constraining things. It's gonna be 10 millimeters. There to there will be 30. Here to here, be 10. Here to here, that will also be 30. And we'll make this one 200. With this one, Looking at it, I think an angle on one side would be really nice. So again, let's get the line tool, start here, over, and up. Trim tool, trim out that section. Go back to sketch dimensions. Let's do eight maybe. Go through and define this one as eight as well. And that's a fine looking sketch. Click finish sketch, extrude. Extrude up. Let's do 30 millimeters this time. We want it pretty strong because it is holding the door of the dishwasher. Looking pretty good now. Now we can go around and fill it, same as before. Grab all these angles. Since this is a larger print, let's do one. One could work, or we could probably go back, go up even higher. Double click to edit it. Try two millimeters, yeah, that's looking a lot better. Do a separate fillet on the top and bottom angles. Let's do those same two millimeters. Create another 3MF file of this one. Hit select, select your body. It's the same parameters as before. Hit OK. Let's open it in Cura. So this one's a bit larger, but it will work at an angle. So let's rotate it 45 degrees. Put it in the middle of the build plate. Now this is a great opportunity to print at a prototype quality level. We're gonna print really fast and really thin, so it's not gonna be very structural, but we're really just seeing if these dimensions that I sketched out are gonna work in the real world. So for example, walls, let's just do a one single wall on the outside. That won't use up too much plastic, a 5% infill. It's just a little bit of infill, so it'll give some rigidity to it. And for speed, let's bump this up to 150, initial layer, let's go up to 50 for that one. So this I can get printed in 59 minutes, it says. Whereas, let me show you the original settings. It would take an extra hour and so much extra filament just to print it, get it off the printer, put it on, and it might totally not work, and then I'll have a worthless bar of plastic here. So I would highly recommend prototyping your designs first. But let's send that first file to the printer and get it printed. So this is our version one, and it just isn't long enough to fully grab onto the dishwasher. 
So now that we know what we want to change from our version 1 to version 2, let's just go back to our original sketch, up these dimensions. I think 50 should work well. And upping these to 10 and 10. Well, this one doesn't have to. Let's leave that at 8. A little bit more of an angle to it. That seems good. The extrusion width seemed fine. And all these fillets are still working here. Let's send it to 3D print, select your body, hit OK. Same thing, just label this one as a version two. And with printing your version two, I would still use a prototype quality of fairly quick, fairly weak, because I might need to print it again. Version two is still not very many versions, and I'd rather not waste plastic if I don't have to. And this is our prototype two, and the longer arms grab onto the door so much better than the last one. And now we're here with our final prototypes and they turned out really good. The air vent clip, they only needed three revisions. The first one was lacking in ways that I didn't know until I actually tested it out here. Once I had a physical device testing it out, I realized all of these parameters I hadn't thought about. I printed a second version, but with this one, I put that middle section on the wrong side. I didn't go through and show you that because that's a dumb mistake that I made. Super easy to change. This one is basically trash now. This was our final third design, and it clips on there well. It holds well. It doesn't slide off laterally or horizontally. So I think this should work really well for the dog to be able to lay on, and she won't move it out of the way, and the air vent will stay open. I also printed it in this dark filament, so it kind of blends in and looks nice. The dishwasher clip on the other side only needed one revision to it. There was the original, and these hooks I made not nearly long enough. This one I made much longer, and this hook I made a little bit bigger. Those were the only parameters I needed to change, and it works. I tried it out this afternoon, and it worked really well to let the dishes dry out even faster. This works fine for now, but it's always nice to have future projects if you ever, on a rainy day, need an extra project. I know I can open up this file again and tweak it for the future. Or if I ever want to learn hinges. I haven't created hinges in Fusion 360 yet, but if I ever wanted to, this would be a great, super simple project to try designing one for. But that about wraps up the entire process of creating your own functional prints. I hope you saw it really wasn't that hard and you shouldn't be intimidated by it. Even big scary software like Fusion 360 is really quite simple as you get into it. And as you want to learn new things, there's great YouTube channels out there that will teach you everything you need to know of all the little functionality, all the tabs involved there. But for anyone who hasn't created your first simple designs, I would highly recommend just opening it up, trying something out, and printing it. It's so satisfying to hold a piece of plastic that was designed by you in a computer, and you're holding it in your hands right here. But anyway, I hope these tips helped you out and inspired you to go out and create something amazing today. If you've learned something today or found this video useful, hit that like button down below. It really helps other people know that this was useful, and it helps out this channel tremendously. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.